Low battery? I hate when that happens. It's no big deal. You know, the Hubble Space Telescope runs on batteries too, and charging them is a big deal. See how they do it next on Real World. Everyone knows there's no extension core long enough to reach to outer space. So NASA scientists had to develop a way to keep Hubble's batteries charged. Turns out, the sun shed light on a solution. We all know that there's lots of light coming from the sun, and there's certain materials that will change that light, what we call photons, into electrons, which is the energy that's in electricity. Art Whipple is the lead mission systems engineer for the Hubble Space Telescope. So on Hubble, we've got big solar arrays that take the light from the sun, make electricity out of it, power the equipment, all the science instruments and the gyroscopes and the computers and whatnot. That keeps Hubble going during the portion of its orbit when it's bathed in sunlight. But what happens when it dips behind the shadow of the Earth? Part of the orbit, we're in night because Hubble goes around on the backside of the Earth from the sun. And so now the solar arrays won't work, so we have to have something to keep Hubble going during that period, and that something are batteries, just like you have in your car. These are a little bit bigger batteries, and they're a little bit better batteries, but they store energy just like a car battery does. Converting sunlight into electricity is done all the time. But the tricky part is keeping the Hubble's batteries charged just the right amount. Hubble scientists don't want to put too much energy into the telescope because things could overheat. And they don't want to put too little into it because the batteries would run down. How do you know what's too much and what's too little? Well, according to Hubble scientists, that's easy. The equation is really simple. You've got the power from the battery, plus the power from the solar array, minus the power from all the equipment on the telescope, has to equal zero. Well, it doesn't equal zero at any instant, and so what you have to do is you have to look over the whole orbit period, from orbit night, orbit day, and you have to average that all out so it comes out to zero. And if it's zero for every orbit, then things can go on indefinitely. Careful management of the system's state of charge is needed to ensure that adequate power is available for anything the Hubble telescope might have to do. This graph shows the power coming out of the solar array over three orbits. And what you can see is at the very beginning of each one of these peaks, the power coming out of the array jumps from zero to its maximum. And then over the daylight period, we manage the amount of power we let come out of it. Remember, we don't want too much power getting into the telescope. And so we step it down over the day pass. And then when the telescope goes into night, the output from the solar array drops to zero again, stays at zero, and then starts to rise again when we come into day the next orbit. This graph shows the battery state of charge. This is the amount of energy that's in the batteries. And you can see that the graph is wiggling around at the top, and there's a lot of room down to zero. That's because we never want to use all the energy that's in the batteries. We want to save enough for emergencies. If there's an equipment failure on the telescope, if there's a problem with the computer, something that keeps us from getting on the sun for a time, we want to make sure there's enough energy in the batteries to save the telescope and uh, continue the science mission. The six batteries on board the observatory had been in continuous use for more than 18 years. But because of normal aging, the telescope's batteries are showing a slow loss in capacity. That's their ability to hold a charge. So it was decided that the two Hubble battery modules, each containing three batteries, needed to be replaced. That task was placed on the to-do list as part of the service mission four. Hubble's solar array panels were updated in Service Mission 3B in March of 2002. The seven-member crew of the Space Shuttle Columbia visited the Hubble in orbit. Through a series of five spacewalks, the astronauts made several upgrades to the telescope's systems. 
Four large flexible solar array panels were replaced with smaller rigid ones that produce 30% more power. Astronauts also replaced the outdated power control unit, which distributes electricity from the solar arrays and batteries to other parts of the telescope. Replacing the original unit, which had been on the job for nearly 12 years, required the telescope to be completely powered down for the first time since 1990. Scientists have determined that replacement of the battery modules in Service Mission 4, combined with the power system enhancements made in Servicing Mission 3B, would result in ample power margins for the remainder of Hubble's lifetime. But this doesn't mean that the equation mentioned earlier will change. Electricity going into and out of the new batteries will still need to balance with the newly added equipment. The amount of power that the equipment needs will go up. We'll have to change how we operate the power system to keep that equation balanced, to keep that equation to zero. So, properly regulating the batteries on the Hubble is a big deal. Being involved in these space adventures is also a big deal for Art Whipple. I was lucky to be born in the exact same year that NASA was born, 1958. When I was a kid, those were the heady days of the Gemini and the Mercury and the Apollo missions. And I was even lucky enough in 1972 to go see the Apollo 16 launch. And so growing up with all of that, I just couldn't resist going into math and science. And uh, that's, that's what I've done all my life. And I ended up being an aerospace engineer. You can get inspired too by going to www.nasa.gov to learn more about the Hubble Space Telescope and the amazing things NASA is working on.